Hey, what's up? This is Laid Back Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and family guy. Okay, so you know the mixing techniques, you know how to mix tracks, to buy tracks, where you get the tracks, make your playlists, but then... In today's vlog, I'll explain you exactly how to do that. I'm gonna give you my five methods on what to mix next and why. Let's go in. Please note that these are my personal recommendations on what to pay attention to. It may vary from DJ to DJ, but from what I can advise you from my decades of experience is this. So let's dive into it. The number one safest way I think to pick your next track is to keep it within the genre. I understand it can be a little bit challenging to actually specify a genre and to explain to you what it consists of regarding range of BPM the feeling and the elements that are in a certain genre is a whole different other vlog on itself. But sometimes a platform will give you that benefit of the doubt. Beatport, for instance, always labels the genres for you. And at a certain point, you'll start actually recognizing the various genres and what they consist of. In my playlist, I often come up with my own genres even, just so I can label certain tracks. And so right now I'll give you an example of two tracks sounding similar because of the genre. This is in my playlist called House Cool. Did you notice the feel and the vibe of those tracks being similar? Here's another mix now using the Twisted House type of tracks. Party starter, do you feel the flow? I'm the party starter, are you ready to go? I'm the party starter, party starter, party starter, party starter, I'm the party starter, everybody let's go. What I'm trying to get across here is that I think it's a safe bet to mix tracks together with the same vibes and sounds and genres can be of help with that. But let's go to the next factor you can pay attention to. Elements. Elements are certain specific sounds or beats that sit in a track. Elements can be the glue that pieces your set together. You could also look out for similar sounding instruments or similar sounding synths. A track could have a certain percussion that sounds like a percussion element from another track, maybe a similar vocal or a bass line or a melody. This you can utilize as a reason to mix certain tracks together. So let's have a listen to this mix and see if you can hear what the binding elements here were.
Did you hear it? Give me a thumbs up right now if you did. If you didn't notice, it was that wah type of synth that bound these tracks together. Now, some of you could also say, yeah, but these tracks are in the same genre. I'd say, you paid good attention, way to go. This is absolutely correct that a lot of tracks with similar elements tie in with each other in regards to the genre. But we could actually use this element type of mixing to go across genres as well. I'll show you in the next example. Before I go into the mix, let me just tell you that I have a full-blown DJ course online with digital DJ tips. It captures all my DJ experience and tips into one course guiding you through a proper curriculum. So if you're thinking of starting to DJ or stepping your DJ game up, make sure to check the link down below right now. All right, back to the mix. I'll use a musical element to cross genre. So the binding factor here is that flute sample and both tracks have one, but they are a different type of tracks, but still the mix made sense. So it's good to know that about elements. You can easily find tracks with similar samples too, like trumpets or saxophones or anything you think they have in common. Next up, we're going into a super important factor for me, energy. Please note, we haven't talked about key just yet. This will come next. I really think genre and elements need to be picked first to then focus on energy. And then after that, my priority, if any, is in key. I know that's a controversial statement in 2021, but let me get back to you on that. Let's talk about energy first. So I have these three tracks. They are in that similar type of house cool genre, but shoot, which one should I mix first? Here's where the energy comes in. Ideally, you'd mix from low energy to high energy, but it depends on your intention or storyline or the mix where in the mix where you are going with the mix or how you want to utilize this. The most important thing is to recognize the energy. Now, let me show you a mix from low energy to high energy first.
Did you notice that dance floor energy picking up there? It made you want to dance harder, right? Or nod your head harder if you would be listening to it. That right there is how you recognize the energy in a track. Now let me do the same with the mix, but now I'll go from high energy to low energy. This is where we brought the energy down and so sometimes this can be a handy tool while you flow into a different genre or a different section in your set or when you've banged it out and want to subtly bring the energy down in your sets. And so a simple way to note this energy is to give it numbers or a rating. You can pick if you want it to be a, a energy level 1 to 5 or energy level 1 to 10, whatever you want to use. But it will come in handy to give your track a little energy label if you're having a hard time recognizing it in the mix. But I said it, energy over key and so let's talk about that. Oh boy, oh boy, stay tuned for the controversy. But before we talk about that, I wanna quickly tell you something about our latest Mix Mash releases because they are awesome. Lady B sure kicked off 2021 the right way. Her new UK banger Sooner Not Later featuring Dame One is such a vibe. I'm with the, I'm with the ballers, we get the pay pass, me out touring, soon not late, our shoes on break fast, hit the road, take a chance, new flows, make it last, shoes go, make it pass, sticky that sticky that. Definitely check it out and keep an eye on her because there's lots more where that came from and she's ready to rock this year. It's been raining remixes. Last week we released three amazing Dance It Off remixes by Kos, B. Jones and Cyril M and Bugen Villa. Today is the day that Jaws and Dub Dogs finally get to officially share their spins on Show Me Love. Boy, there are some more remixes coming up on the 12th and 19th, as well as a live stream where we will be announcing the winners of the remix contest. Link in the description below for more info about that. Time to talk about mixing in key and some controversy. Here we go. 
Key or mixing in key? With the coming of a whole new DJ generation, I see there's a lot of mixed in key police on the internet. Pretty much even seeing a mix faulty or flawed if two tracks aren't in key. Disclaimer, I have nothing against mixed in key. I actually think it's a really handy tool and I'm thankful for it. It should just not be as prioritized as most DJs would think nowadays. One of the reasons why old school DJs like me, mind you, I've been DJing professionally for 24 years now. One of the reasons why we never really paid much attention to mixing and key is all the things I have mentioned prior that hold priority over mixing and key. But also tracks used to have at least one minute of intro and outro that only consisted of beats. So it was easy to blend two tracks and then keep them blended without people noticing them being out of key. But I understand that we are not on vinyl anymore. I understand this is not the 90s anymore. And I do understand that with the technology in 2021 and the short edits that we're trying to blend that we need to keep mindful of key. Now let me first blow the mixed and key police away with this example. In this example, I'm mixing two tracks and I'm not paying attention to the genre, energy, or elements and let's listen how this really affects the dance floor energy. It's a big room track versus a deeper house track and so if the energy in the first track is say an eight then the deeper house track i would label that as a three in energy and so yes it perfectly matches in key but then you miss out on the other three factors that i had mentioned before i hope you can hear how tricky it can be to prioritize mixed in key if you would do this type of a mix in a club or at a festival people will actually want to go get a drink and so leave the dance floor. And so it gets very tricky. Now, if you're talking about mixing an acapella over an instrumental, that's a whole different story because you'll keep the mix going for a little while. It is absolutely essential that both are in the same key. But then again, there's always exceptions. In short, my rule all this time in regards to key has remained the same. If the track sounding key, make the mix nice and long. And if it's out of key, just mix short. So I just mix a big room track into a deeper track. And lots, let's talk about that because after keeping key in mind, I'd like to talk about the art of storytelling in DJing. Wait, no. What's up party people? I'm DJ X. How are you feeling? Please don't. I'm so happy that you are here today. I'm gonna play my new track and I want you to know the story behind it. It all began with... Okay, so not that type of story. I meant actually letting the music speak and having a certain flow in your sets. This is another old school method that a lot of producers turned DJs miss out on nowadays. But something that makes as much sense as having a conversation. Say you and I are having a conversation and I switch from topic every 30 seconds. Wouldn't you be confused after a couple of minutes, let alone having a conversation for an hour? Or maybe seeing it as food where in a restaurant it's most common to have an appetizer, the main course, 
and then dessert, right? In most producer DJ sets, we go from main course to appetizer to dessert back to the main course. What I'm trying to say is that this works very similar in DJ sets. Going from a big room track to a deeper track into trap, into future house, into hip hop does not make sense. It'll only make sense if you extend those sections out, play a section of big room, build that up with that energy. And I'd recommend a minimum of two tracks and as a maximum, basically if your crowd or yourself lose interest. When that moment comes, it's time to switch genres. And so go ahead and open it up and lower that energy, maybe with a deep house section. Do the same, at least play two tracks and continue until you're done with that vibe. And here we go. Now let's switch into trap and you do, do the same exact thing. And in this way, it's a conversation, a story if, you're, if you want. People will get used to this topic and people will be ready to switch topics when that time arrives. The overall line of a total DJ set matters. Depending on what the DJ has played before you, I would never start out with high energy because where can you go after that? It's about a flow in a set and just like life, it ebbs and flows and it builds up and it breaks down. But also try and ask yourselves where you are in your set and where you are going with your set where do you want to end with your set? What do you want people to remember in the middle? And I realize this one is a bit more vague than the, the previous factors that I had mentioned, but it's super important to, to grasp and to try out in your own sets. Of course, there's other things to bear in mind like BPM, uh, date added uh, of the tracks, uh, the artist, wordplay and much more. But these five I would recommend will get you started off nicely and I'm excited for you to try it in your sets. There we have it, my five tips on what to mix next. Did you like this info? Do you like me sharing my info with you? Make sure to give me a thumbs up right now. I'm excited for you to see next time's vlog as well. So make sure to hit that subscribe button now to not miss out. Also, make sure to check out my socials and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bells up. Rave safely and salute.